Welcome to the Global Discussion, discussions with creatives, leaders and thinkers. My name's Simon Hodgkins. It's a pleasure to be joined here by Making Sang. Making, you're very welcome to the podcast. Let's begin by asking you to introduce yourself and tell us all about the wonderful work that you're involved in. So over to you, Making. Thank you so much uh, for the invitation, Simon. Uh, as you quite rightly said, my name is Making Sang. My first name is Making, and I call myself the FOMO creator. <laughs> And um, I help um, businesses, conferences, festivals uh, to create that buzz and excitement live on the socials, generating that FOMO in order to sell out. <laughs> and the, the, the FOMO, this fear of missing out, right? You kind of get the hype going, you kind of get the excitement going in events and festivals. And how, how do you do that? What's involved in that when you say that that's what I do? How do you go about doing that making? Well, I uh, bring my trusty phone and my microphone with me and uh, I will uh, listen. If it's a conference, uh, then I will listen to the speakers and I live tweet uh, like a fury. So my uh, personal best uh, is 1,376 tweets uh, across two days, uh, reaching 31 million people. Uh, I also create Instagram stories um, to create that buzz and excitement on my uh, clients' accounts. So uh, the whole intention of that is for people who were sitting on the fence didn't quite get their ticket. They'll see how amazing the event is. They've missed out and think, oh, I better book on to the next uh, event. And so um, so that's what I've done. So my personal best in that one uh, is um, that um, the event's been sold out at the end of day two of the conference, which is pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, that, at is, festivals. that is awesome. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> and at festivals, I interview uh, um, attendees because uh, if people, um, you know, were, again, sitting on the fence or hadn't heard of the festival, they want to see a little bit of themselves in the people that I interview. And so if people are of a particular demographic, um, age, um, you know, or, or they like a particular genre of music and they see ordinary people having a good old time, having a great old time, then again, that live content, which is put onto Facebook Live or Instagram or LinkedIn even, uh, TikTok as well, uh, then um, people think, oh my God, this is amazing. How did I not hear about it? I've got to book the next event. So that's the kind of thing that I do. Everything that I do is live uh, and is put onto my clients' uh, social media accounts. You're no stranger to live events. And I've seen you in action running around with the microphone interviewing people. It must take a lot of energy. Is that something that comes natural to you? Are you just one of those kind of people that's always buzzing around? Or after a festival, are you always completely exhausted? Because it sounds like with the amount of social media you do and the amount of interviews that you do live, particularly when it's all condensed into a day or two, it sounds like it takes a lot of energy. Yeah, so contrary to popular belief, I'm actually an introvert. <laughs> And so um, it does take a lot of energy, but I, I love it. When I'm there, I know that I'm making an impact. I can see all the smiles and I want to put the smiles out onto the socials. But yeah, Simon, I sleep for about three, four days immediately after a conference. Um, and I, 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 need to, I need that recovery in order to ensure that, I, you know, I uh, put my big, um, bright, bubbly personality back onto the, uh, into the next conference. So so, um, so yeah, I am a, an introvert, which means that I do like to spend my um, a little bit of time by myself, uh, as well as being in the presence of other people. Yeah, I can understand that. And look, I have to ask you, because obviously a lot of your customers are people putting on events, putting on festivals, putting on conferences. And the world's gone through a bit of a change, hasn't it? Because for a year or two, depending on where you lived, everything kind of stopped. It kind of locked down. And that... You know, you must have had to do a bit of virtual sort of uh, work, I'm sure, like like we all did. But are you also seeing that starting to turn back on? Is like business back to normal? Is it better than ever? Are people now going back to conferences? You know, from any anecdotal evidence I see, the most conferences I see seem to be pretty busy again. Yeah, so um, as you quite rightly said, you know, the the people who were running conferences and um, 
at when the the height of the pandemic, they had to pivot very very quickly, uh, change their world to uh, to the virtual, and so. Um, so yeah, it was easy for me to uh, to change that, um, which meant that I was uh, creating content not from my smartphone but from my uh, my desktop. So it's slightly different, a slightly different pace. Um, so my personal best there is five hundred and forty eight tweets of a one day conference. Um, but it uh, still had the same impact. Uh, and the pandemic did actually catch a lot of people out. So people who were poo-pooing social media, saying it's a fad, it'll never catch on, uh, suddenly they panicked. And so actually the uh, social media strategy side of my business, where I was um, uh, delivering training courses on uh, social media and how to use it effectively, um, that was also very, very busy um, at the height of the pandemic for those people who got caught out. Now, what I realized was that uh, there were a lot of people who didn't know that they can be their own um, hype, mo hype monster and they can create their own uh, FOMO. They don't need uh, to hire a FOMO creator like me. They can do if they want the best, <laughs> but they can actually create it themselves or they can train uh, or I can train your social media manager to be able to be, uh, create FOMO as well. So um, the training sides of um, generating that buzz and excitement has also increased um, when when people realize that, ah, okay, so you can be your own FOMO engine, you can create your own publicity on social media. How do I do that? And so I've been delivering training on that as well. And the biggest uh, learning that um, I have um, been doing in the last uh, last year or so, delivering uh, different talks uh, up and down the country and online as well, is that if you don't run an event, you can still create an event. You can create an event out of anything. So if you sell a product, if you sell a service, if you are raising money for a charity, if you are promoting a cause, you can create an event out of that. And so um, I teach people how to generate that free FOMO. So in the lead up to the event, the live FOMO, which is on the day, uh, and post FOMO. So for those who might have missed it, this is what you missed out on. So, um, so yeah, in the last sort of six months, I've been doing a lot more trainings on how you can be a, be your own uh, FOMO creator uh, and how you can create an event out of anything. Yeah, and I suppose for things that are maybe annual, you know, a big annual conference, you normally you sort of went to the event or you didn't go to the event you heard about it for a day or two and then you didn't hear about it again for another nine months 12 months uh whereas now as you're saying the work that you're doing you're helping conference organizers they're literally selling out on day two of the conference for the following year so that must be a yeah. real a real boost for people because they're you know they're booking tickets they're selling seats uh, and also, I like um, what you're saying, because in the same way that your clients uh, making had to pivot and some people got caught out, but you also had this other element to what you do with the training. I know you do something called the FOMO Creator Show as well, uh, where you're teaching people and you're sharing sort of best practice. And to, what did you call them? Hype monsters, getting people to be yes. <laughs> to be their own hype monster. I love that term. Um but uh, you're right, because sometimes they don't have the skill set in house, or they need a little bit of advice on how to do it. And of course, you've worked with things where you've reached like, you know, 30 odd million people, you were saying over one event, um, to help people do that. So you're perfectly placed to help people with conferences. It's really about getting that engagement, isn't it making? It really is. But even before that, um, you know, even before that, uh, people need to get to know who we are as, um, you know, uh, as a business, as a person, because people aren't going to buy from you if they don't know who you are. So, um, you know, fear of uh, FOMO means the fear of missing out. So the first thing we need to do is to to address that fear. <laughs> and get over the fear of being more visible online. Um, I know a lot of business owners uh, do, um, you know, do have this, this fear amongst them. And I have to admit, you know, um, Simon, you and I were talking earlier about how, you know, we've been hacked, our accounts have been hacked in the past. Um, and so when I got my Instagram and Facebook accounts hacked, I had to, you know, 
regain that confidence in order to get back online again. So I completely understand where you're coming from. Um, and uh, and so once we've gotten over that fear, we need to remember that it's not about us. <laughs> it is about the impact that we are going to make on uh, our cause, on the people that we're going to help uh, and so on. And once you make it about why you went into business in the first place, it makes it less about you. And then hopefully that will give you more confidence in, or, in order to gain visibility uh, and to, you know, and to then become your own uh, hype monster. So dealing with that fear can be crippling. And, you know, Simon, you mentioned the FOMO Creator Show. <laughs> That's in um, production. Um, it has been in production um, for two years. <laughs> when I got imposter syndrome thinking, you know, comparing myself to my peers, thinking it's not good enough. It needs to be planned a bit more. But the planning was just procrastination, really. <laughs> <laughs> and then in January, when uh, a friend of mine came to me and said he needed a bit more help, he wanted um, to um, get more memberships um, for uh, his community. I said, oh, OK, I'll launch a FOMO Creator Show. You could be my first guest. <laughs> and that was it. And so I just launched it just like that. Forgot about myself because it's not about me. It's about the people that I can help. So dealing with that fear, that's the first hurdle uh, we need to get over before we can even contemplate the becoming our own hype monsters. Very good. Very good. Thanks for sharing that. And look, I know that you've often said, uh, as a positioning piece that you're sort of bridging this gap, aren't you, between this world of social media and I suppose the more traditional PR. And it's about bridging that gap. And the question I've got for you is uh, a successful hype monster. How much more important is video today on social media than it was maybe five years ago, three or four years ago? Because we see an awful lot today, don't we? It's reels and shorts and snippets of videos. And how does that work in the conference setting today? So um, I'm actually going to, if you'd have asked me this question last year, I'd have said, yeah, video is so important. You've got to get video, get brave with it and all the rest of it. But you mentioned Reels and uh, Instagram. They went really all in with Reels and, you know, you got more reach on Reels than you did with your photographs. And recently they kind of changed their mind. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of said, well, we kind of changed the algorithm now so that if you post uh, photographs, um, if you, you know, write, um, then that will still have a equal weighting to, uh, to your reels. So this was Instagram responding to the fact that even though um, you know, Google have been uh, and all the major social media platforms have been saying for 10 years, look, video is going nowhere. You've got to get onto video, this, that and the other. But the thing is, we're, we are all humans. We are all different. And some of us love video. Some of us prefer to read. Some of us uh, prefer um, photographs that we can flick and swipe right on. So, you know, and all of our communities all have different people and different personalities that respond differently to different styles of content. So to answer your uh, question rather long-windedly, <laughs> if you love video, brilliant, do that. If you're not ready for video, that's okay as well. And, um, you know, and for those people who love video, don't keep doing video. You know, you have to mix it up a bit because your audience is made up of people who love to read, people who like to look at photographs, people who do like video. So uh, hopefully that answers your question. But it does. And I think it's an important reminder that not everybody's the same. Everybody has their personal preferences in the same way everybody has their own personal social media uh, tools and platform preferences. And I think the other thing that you've mentioned, which is obviously sage advice is just as you think you've got it all figured out the algorithm changes because you're not really in control of it so you have to sort of ride the wave a little bit i suppose um but you also have to do what what works uh at the time what works for your community and the, the last question i want to ask you on this because i do want to move on and ask you a couple of other things is you obviously love what you're doing uh there's a uh, there's a passion that comes through loud and clear uh, but what is it about what you do that you like? Because Is it the networking aspects of it? Is it the finding out about people? Is it seeing the, the conference do well? Is it the public speaking elements to it? What 
what about what you do do you really love making the the last conference that i created fomo for they quoted lady gaga <laughs> and um and whenever lady gaga gets a compliment about her singing her acting she says um thank you i've worked very hard for this and so rather than saying thank you so much for your compliment well it wasn't anything really you know and be uh, and sort of um go low with it it's acknowledging that yeah it is my hard work and i'm really good at this stuff so um what i love is seeing that light bulb moment go off when my client uh, sees the work that I've done and they absolutely love it. When I am talking to uh, attendees and, uh, you know, some of these attendees have never been on video before, but they are very passionate about their business. And so um, encouraging them to talk about their business while this kind of recording things happening, just ignore the camera, just talk to me. Um, it gives them the confidence to be braver and think, you know what, I can do more and be more visible on social. So seeing the confidence grow uh, within the people that I interview is fantastic as well. Um, and having conversations with people. So you mentioned the networking elements, which is great. Um, you know, sometimes when I talk to people, they really aren't confident uh, to go on video, which is absolutely fine. But if I can help them in any way, and just having that conversation with somebody is really important. So, you know, um, again, at that last conference that I did, um, there was a lady very, very nervous. Um, there was an exhibitor who was offering, um, you know, some social media content for you to talk uh, in front of video about your business. And so after having a chat with her, she finally plucked up the courage to go and go and visit that exhibitor stand in order to get the promo video for herself. And she did not one, she did two, which was amazing. So I couldn't capture her, um, you know, to be interviewed on the day, but at least I made an impact on her and, um, you know, for her business going forward. And that made me absolutely smile and dance with joy. So that was incredible. That's great. I like that a lot. Uh, something else I want to do, because we like to ask our guests a little bit about themselves. Uh, and one of the things I like to ask is about your own learning style. Now, you obviously have to keep your finger on the pulse of what's happening, particularly in your world. But to do that, are you constantly reading books? Do you search the internet? Are you constantly just buried in social media? Uh, do you like meeting people and learning that way? Listen to podcasts, audio books? How does it work for you with all the different channels we have today? I am very, very lucky in that uh, my good friend, uh, Amanda Webb from Spider Working, she has a uh, fantastic show uh, every Friday that goes out that gives us the latest and greatest in all things digital. And we've collaborated together to produce our own LinkedIn audio show, which was on Twitter Spaces, but we've now moved uh, into uh, LinkedIn. And, uh, and so I get to learn about the latest and greatest. We uh, discuss um, our thoughts and opinions. Um, sometimes we agree, sometimes we disagree respectfully. Uh, and we invite people to come on to our LinkedIn audio show to uh, share their thoughts and opinions. So, um, so Amanda, she will share a Google Doc with me. And so I read through um, the links uh, of the latest digital marketing news in that way. So I am a um I do read blog posts um when I can. Um when I'm out and about, when I'm driving, and uh, now that we are allowed to go out and drive again, I listen to podcasts. So there are some people that I listen to uh, on a regular basis. Uh and if I'm sat in front of the TV, then I will uh watch a lot of videos. So um a diary of a CEO. I do especially like uh, video podcasts because uh, I like to see, you know, people's faces and how they respond to questions and that kind of thing. So um, I listen to, uh, yeah, so it's, I, I watch a lot of um, videos uh, as well. And I also, I'm a big fan of um, political shows. So I do watch um, political comedy shows, um, the US and the UK in particular. Uh, and uh, and sometimes I learn things from that as well for um, 
you know, different styles, which then I can incorporate into my, um, you know, into my FOMO creating as well, because a lot of the interviews that I, uh, that I do are, um, have been influenced by the likes of Terry Wogan, um, Russell Harty, <laughs> That's a long time ago. Mrs. Merton from the 1990s. Uh, and, you know, watching back on their videos, Graeme Norton, Jonathan Ross and all the rest of it. Um, I try and, um, you know, learn from them, you know, because they've been interviewing for a gazillion years and see if there's a way that I can adapt it and make it um, the making uh, flavor, um, as you will. So um, videos and reading primarily. Um, I don't have the patience to read books, even though I've got a whole host of them here. I've read some of them, um, but um, but yeah, I do hope to get into the practice of reading books more um, because I know it, you know, um, yeah, it's really important to read books. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I just don't have the patience at times. That's okay, and uh, yeah, you, you mentioned a few sort of talk show hosts there who interview people. Uh, you went back a few years as well with some of the names, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, I suppose it's it's right in your sweet spot, right? Because it is sort of like this sort of celebrity feel to some of the interviews. It is about creating this hype and creating this um, fear of missing out. So uh, yeah, I can I can understand that. Um, the other thing I'd like to ask you is about on your journey, people that you admire, people that inspire you. Um, you know, people maybe have given you a helping hand along the way. Um. I am a big lurker, <laughs> so I often talk about um, when I'm delivering my uh, FOMO talks. Um, I ask people, you know, if you if you're a lurker, and we're all lurkers, aren't we? Um, and I do try my best to acknowledge if I've seen a great piece of content or a great style or something that I know will help my business, then I will share it to my community. And I'll acknowledge them. Uh, so um, I have to say, uh, Simon, your global discussion, when you asked me to appear uh, on it, um, I was just overjoyed and thrilled and humbled and honoured because I'd seen some of your guests, uh, uh, previous guests, uh, and they're incredible. I um, want to give a big shout out to Roger Edwards. Uh, so one of um, his book I have read, which is uh, over in the back here, um over in the back here and I can't find it where is it I've, I think I've taken it down for research um and he Roger Edwards talks about marketing um simple marketing you've got to make your message simple cat sat on the mat that's it uh, and when I first heard him talk uh, in London um I just thought wow that's what marketing's about. So I um I watch his podcast, which is a video podcast with uh, Pascal, and uh, and they talk about what we can learn from films. Because one of my big passions uh, is watching films. I do love watching films and uh, and learn from their acting styles and uh, and camera angles and that kind of thing. Um, but the way that films are marketed, uh, Roger and Pascal talk about that. Uh, so, um, I learn a lot for, uh, from, uh, uh, from those two lovely chaps. So yourself, Pascal, um, and, uh, and, and Roger, um, Amanda, um, is incredible so her digital coffee show um I learned from her a lot and uh, I love the way I subscribe to her email I love the way that she uh, delivers them I love the way that she um uh produces this show uh, that she has on a Friday and then sprinkles a clips from the show throughout the whole week so it's something that I aspire to and something that um you know I will be doing with my FOMO creator show at some point in the future so uh, they're just a handful of, of people that I, uh, I admire well, thanks for sharing that. And uh, thank you for the kind words. I do appreciate it. And um, yeah, Amanda's show in particular, um, you know, I, I'm aware of that. And uh, she does, it kind of like, it's a good catch up on a Friday, isn't it? Of everything that's been going on. So yeah, it's a great, it's a great, uh, it's a great show for that and for sharing that knowledge. Um, uh, the other thing I want to ask you is about advice. So just let's focus in on advice a little bit more. There must be advice that you've picked up along your journey that you hold dear, or is there advice that you pass on to others, maybe through your training, that you think is really valuable that you could share with our community here today? 
So um, in life as a person, not just in business, you do have your ups and downs, don't you? <laughs> you're confident one day and you're a, you know, a, a quivering wreck the next day. And uh, my dearest, dearest friend, uh, Tim Lewis, um, he, um, I think on, you know, one of my down days, um, I was feeling a bit sorry for myself. And, and he said, you know what, we're all trying to figure this thing out in business. We're all trying, we're all experimenting, we're all creating and seeing what works and what doesn't. Sometimes it works for a while. And then if it doesn't, because the algorithm have changed, we need to change, you know, change it up again. So I, um, I hold that dear when I, you know, when I remember <laughs> that we're all trying to figure it out because, you know, even the most confident amongst us, um, you may, you may see their social media posts and you think, oh, wow, they're amazing, you know, what they do, but um, you don't know what's happening behind the scenes. <laughs> Their personal life could be falling apart. It could be that they faked it before they came online. Uh, it could be, you know, all sorts. You know, you you really, really don't um, have a clue. Um, and it's not our responsibility to second guess either, you know. Um, so um, if it was easy to run a business, then we'd all be doing it. If it was easy to make whatever amount you are, you know, have set your target for, then uh, we'd all be doing it if there was a blueprint. But because, you know, humans are so different, we are lots of different flavors, lots of different cultures, all blended together. Um, it means that what works for me will work ever so slightly differently for my clients, which is why I need to understand what my client needs and then deliver it in the way that they want it to be delivered. So um, that was really important for me to hear uh, from Tim. Uh, and he's always experimenting uh, and always trying new things. And, uh, you know, he's absolutely incredible. So uh, he's currently in the States. So he wanted to fulfill his uh, goal of um, visiting 50 states before he's 50. Then the pandemic hit. <laughs> So he's had a couple of uh, years uh, on top of that. So he's just visiting a few states at the moment. Uh, so uh, he is uh, absolutely wonderful uh, with that. Um, I think that um, I do read a lot of quotes. Um, and um, But I also, it, it's funny, when I was growing up, um, my parents um, are Chinese. They came over to the UK uh, in the 70s and growing up with a lot of racism, you know, I wanted to shy away from my ide identity, but, you know, I'm born with it. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of teachings that my parents um, instilled in me um, may have come from uh, philosophers of the past uh, and I didn't realize that I've been doing it all along and that kind of stuff. So rediscovering uh, philosophers uh, like uh, Lao Tzu and uh, Confucius uh, and some of their teachings, I like to learn the um, why they came to that conclusion, you know, uh, listen to the background story, as opposed to just reading the quote, because, uh, you know, quotes are often in context, and we need to understand the full context in order to learn from it. Uh, so I like to do a bit of background reading around that, uh, and, uh, and be inspired by that as well. So, um, Maya Angelou is incredible. I uh, love listening to her quotes uh, and uh, about creativity. Um, and Muhammad Ali, actually, funny enough, um, he uh, said once, it isn't bragging if you can back it up. And, you know, we all know Muhammad Ali was so confident, but that's what that's because he was the best. You know, his stats tell it, uh, you know, tell you everything that he is, you know, one of the greatest uh, boxers. So as business owners, if we've got the stats to prove that our test, you know, our testimonials tell us that our clients love us, um, then don't be afraid to show that to the world because it's fact. Right. And so that's a, a quote that I often um, remind myself as well. Well, that's great advice. Thank you for that. Uh, that's wonderful. Um, the other thing I want to squeeze in is a question about the next six, nine, 12 months. How do you go about planning and what's on the roadmap for you making? Planning? What's that? <laughs> well, I'm learning to plan better. That's one of my goals for this year. 
rather well, than a, do that's everything an honest answer, on the right? fly. Some people they just live in the moment, right? It's everybody's yeah. different, isn't that what you said earlier? So, yeah, so for you, you go, you, you're sort of working in the moment more. You're working maybe just a little bit ahead. Not you're not thinking about the next three years. How does it work for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it is important to plan ahead and I'm trying to learn as much um, from my partner, Steve, who is um, a science fiction writer uh, and he's got a 10 year goal, which is incredible. Uh, and uh, and I love that. And he's, you know, year upon year, he's, you know, smash his goals. That's something that I, you know, that I want to be, you know, be more, um, you know, more organized and be more patient in. <laughs> in that way so um you know I mentioned at the top of the show that um you know we can all become our own hype monsters we can all become our own FOMO creators so um I have talked about before imposter syndrome kicked in <laughs> talks about creating the FOMO creator academy um and so given that I had two years of imposter syndrome before I launched my FOMO creator show then um, next year is when I will, um, you know, uh, kick off the FOMO Creator Academy to teach social media managers or solo business owners um, on how to become their own hype monster. Um, social media management is a very different skill to creating FOMO. They're very intertwined and you definitely need both. Um, so that is my goal for, um, you know, maybe later on this year. Um, one of the other things that I want to do is, um, Simon, I don't know about you, um, but you probably have lots of projects in the, uh, <laughs> you know, waiting the wings that you've uh, maybe done a page or two on and they've just been left there hanging. So um, I've had about seven books in my head and I want to get one of them out. Uh, so the FOMO Creator book. Uh, for four events uh, will be I'm hoping uh, that I'll finish that um, by the end of the year and have that uh, released to the world uh, to let people know how they can create a FOMO for their own events and if they don't have an event how they can create events out of their business uh, or product or service well, the FOMO creator book sounds like a wonderful book you must do that immediately that sounds great <laughs> Um, well, listen, thanks for sharing that. And thanks for being so honest about how it works for you, because everybody's different. And uh, I suppose the other thing, just just before we run out of time today, uh, there's really only two things I want to cover uh, before we wrap up. One is, is there anything else that you're involved in? Or is there anything else that you want to share with our audience today? And secondly, and importantly, if people want to hire the chief hype monster, or find out more about FOMO, Where's the best place to send people to? So my website is fomocreator.social. So you can uh, have a read about um, some of my uh, testimonials and clients and, and that kind of thing. If you want to see me live in action, then um, check out my tweets, my Instagram, um, or my TikToks. I do TikTok from time to time, <laughs> or LinkedIn. So uh, Making Sang on LinkedIn, FOMO Creator on uh, Instagram and also YouTube um, and making tea on Twitter and TikTok uh, on the teas. Um, another project that I've got going on at the moment is um, the tick is to uh, talking. <laughs> the clock is ticking with our planet and we need to do our little bit um, for the planet. Uh, we also need to call the big corporates you know old companies um as well we need to call them out um but you know what is it that you're doing to save the, save the planet so uh, myself and uh, three wonderful friends um from uh, the states and um down in um essex uh, we've come together to create little videos to hopefully inspire people to think about what they can do um, to help save the planet. So, um, you know, just thinking little ways that you, you 
probably already do or if you don't um you know let people know how uh, people can uh, save water uh, maybe go for a walk rather than um you know take the tr- um, you know take the train rather than drive or um you know car share uh, rather than drive by yourself um, you know those little things uh, that we can do um i chose not to have children um, to save the planet for example and uh, not everybody can do that but maybe you can give up uh, meat for a day um, so I have meat free Wednesdays with um, Steve, for example, and um, we are producing these little videos uh, to put out onto uh, TikTok and to YouTube. Um, and uh, and we're encouraging people that we talk to to do that as well. So if you want to know more about that, then do contact me. Uh, maybe create a little video, uh, a minute video to, uh, for a YouTube short or a, a TikTok and just share to the world uh, what it is you're doing to help save the planet. Well, look, that's a nice note to end on. So thank you so much indeed to making. Thanks to everybody who's been watching or listening to this episode of the global discussion around the world. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe, do everything I need you to do to help support this podcast. And I hope that you'll join me back here for more discussions with leading creatives, leaders, and thinkers. So thank you, May King. It's been wonderful to talk to you again today. Thank you so much, Simon. Thanks, everyone.